In my last video, I showed how the blade lags behind the machine position and that this causes cut inaccuracies. We can't account for it with a static offset because the amount of blade lag changes during the cut, so we'd like a way to track the blade's position in real time. So let's start with a list of requirements to figure out what we need to build. It has to be non-contact since the blade is moving vertically around 1 meter per second. We want one, but preferably two readings per stroke at least, which is currently 6 Hz and could go up to 10 Hz. The max displacement in any direction is about 3 mm. We want the resolution to be down in the tens of micron range, preferably single digit. The blade is super tiny. Think of a 24 gauge wire or 0.5 mm pencil lead. And there's not a lot of space left, so it needs to be compact. Here's what I came up with, which is best described as a split vision periscope, I think. The camera looks through a series of mirrors to obtain two orthogonal views on a cube. Here you can see how light emanating from the two sides bounces through the mirrors and ends up on the image sensor. And then this animation shows how the image is rotated 90 degrees. And finally, thanks to some ray tracing, we can see what the camera will see looking through the mirrors. And I orient the camera sensor in portrait mode so that we get the most pixels measuring left to right. I cut the mirrors out of a hard drive platter so that they were first surface, otherwise you get ghosting effects. And the wedge prism is back cut and bent to form the 90 degree corner reflector. This works well enough, but I would be better off with a real mirrored corner prism. I'm using the Raspberry Pi HQ 12 megapixel camera with a variable focus inspection lens. The periscope part of the setup lets the camera lens sit down below and still capture the image right up against the bottom of the support table, which is not shown in this picture. And I added some LEDs. Here is the image you get with a backlight to show the field of view. But ultimately, having a backlight gets in the way and it's hard to get even light without washing out the blade or casting shadows. So I switched to just front illumination. It's worth pointing out that these images are not taken in a dark room. It's just that the mirrors only accept a narrow range of light. So it acts as a very good filter to remove the background, which makes the image processing easier later on. Here's the first test showing the image processing, which is just a simple threshold for now. You can see top and bottom views blend onto each other, which I think is because my corner prism is not really a corner. So in the image processing, I just mask out the middle strip and measure the average X location of the white pixels. Then to calibrate the system, I clamp the blade to the X, Y axes and move through a series of grid points, capturing an image at each location. These are the known points in millimeters and then compared with the measured points in pixels. You can see that points A, B, C, D are both rotated and flipped in the right image, which is expected, but we also have an issue that the lines A, C, and B, D aren't perpendicular and aren't equal in length, so we also have some unequal scaling going on. To fit this data, we find what is called a homography between the corresponding points so that when we take a new pixel reading, we can translate it to its real-world coordinate. This homography is just a transformation matrix that most accurately matches our measured and known data. And you can see that after transforming our measured data with this matrix, we get a very nice fit. I still need to get some better lighting because as you can see here, the blade reflects light differently as it rotates. So in summary, we hit all our requirements with a single camera and a few pieces of old hard drive platter. All my testing was done at 1920 by 1080 resolution, which gives an 11 micron blade resolution at 60 FPS, but we can easily double that by switching to a higher resolution capture at a lower frame rate. I don't have a good way to externally validate these resolutions, but I think they're plausible, so I'll run with that. Stay tuned for closing the control loop, and if you've ever seen similar sensing solutions, leave them in the comments below, or let me know how you would solve this problem.